John Stuart Williamson April 29, 1908 to November 10, 2006, who wrote as Jack Williamson, was an American science fiction writer, often called the Dean of Science Fiction, especially after the death of Robert Heinlein in 1988. Early in his career he sometimes used the pseudonyms Will Stewart and Nils O. Sonderland. Topic. Early life Williamson was born April 29, 1908 in Bisbee, Arizona Territory, and spent his early childhood in western Texas. In search of better pastures, his family migrated to rural New Mexico in a horse-drawn covered wagon in 1915. The farming was difficult there and the family turned to ranching, which they continue to this day. He served in the U.S. Army Air Corps in World War II as a weather forecaster. Topic. Writing career As a child Williamson enjoyed storytelling to his brother and two sisters. As a young man, he discovered the magazine Amazing Stories, established in 1926 by Hugo Gernsback, after answering an ad for one free issue. He strove to write his own fiction and sold his first story to Gernsback at age 20. The Metal Man was published in the December 1928 issue of Amazing. During the next year Gernsback published three more of his stories in the new pulp magazine Science Wonder Stories and Air Wonder Stories, and separately published, The Girl from Mars, by Miles J. Brewer and Williamson as science fiction series number one. His work during this early period was heavily influenced by A. Merritt, author of The Metal Monster 1920, and other fantasy serials. Noting the Merritt influence, Algus Budrys described, the Metal Man, as a story full of memorable images. Early on, Williamson became impressed by the works of Miles J. Brewer and struck up a correspondence with him. A doctor who wrote science fiction in his spare time, Brewer had a strong talent and turned Williamson away from dreamlike fantasies towards more rigorous plotting and stronger narrative. Under Brewer's tutelage, Williamson would send outlines and drafts for review. Their first work together was the novel Birth of a New Republic in which moon colonies were undergoing something like the American Revolution. A theme later taken up by many other SF writers, particularly in Robert A. Heinlein's The Moon as a Harsh Mistress. Racked by emotional storms and believing many of his physical ailments to be psychosomatic, Williamson underwent psychiatric evaluation in 1933 at the Menninger Clinic in Topeka, Kansas, in which he began to learn to resolve the conflict between his reason and his emotion. From this period, his stories take on a grittier, more realistic tone. By the 1930s he was an established genre author, and the teenaged Isaac Asimov was thrilled to receive a postcard from Williamson, whom he had idolized, which congratulated him on his first published story and offered, Welcome to the ranks. Williamson remained a regular contributor to the pulp magazines but did not achieve financial success as a writer until many years later. An unfavorable review of one of his books, which compared his writing to that of a comic strip, brought Williamson to the attention of the New York Sunday News, which needed a science fiction writer for a new comic strip. Williamson wrote the strip Beyond Mars 1952-55, loosely based on his novel C.T. Ship, until the paper dropped all comics. Beginning 1954 and continuing into the 1990s, Williamson and Frederick Pohl wrote more than a dozen science fiction novels together, including the series Jim Eden, Starchild, and Cuckoo. Williamson continued to write as a nonagenarian and won both the Hugo and Nebula Awards during the last decade of his life, by far the oldest writer to win those awards. In his later years, he would also criticize attempts to write serious. Science fiction Maybe because of my own background of writing commercial SF for so many years, I have a great deal of respect for good craftsmanship of the sort that commercial writers must develop. The labels you hear so much of. Commercial. Serious writer. Mainstream. Hack. New wave. 
experimental are usually very misleading. In my own field, Ed Hamilton and Hank Kuttner and more recently Bob Silverberg are all writers who formed a fine command of the SF genre early in their careers and who later on used this to do work that is more consciously literary and hence more admired by critics. But certainly the writing they did earlier was deservedly popular among SF fandom, who evidently found these works serious enough to merit reading. I am opposed, however, to literary tricks that tend towards obscurity or artificial difficulty, though I can see arguments for that kind of approach. My own experience as a teacher of writing confirms my sense that new authors with artistic ambitions may find themselves scorning too many of the old forms and patterns simply because they blindly associate them with hack work. The point is that these patterns and structures form the basic vocabulary through which all SF writers must speak. That's one reason I'm not completely sympathetic with contemporary writers like Silverberg and Chip Delany and Tom Dish, who are clearly aiming to get themselves recognized as serious or mainstream authors. Topic academic career Williamson received his Bachelor of Arts and Master of Arts degrees in English in the 1950s from Eastern New Mexico University in Portales, near the Texas Panhandle, joining the faculty of that university in 1960. He remained affiliated with the school for the rest of his life. In the late 1990s, he established a permanent trust to fund the publication of El Portal, ENMU's Journal of Literature and Art. In the 1980s, he made a sizable donation of books and original manuscripts to ENMU's library, which resulted in the formation of a special collections department. The library now is home to the Jack Williamson Science Fiction Library, which ENMU's website describes as one of the top science fiction collections in the world. In addition, Williamson hosted the Jack Williamson Lectureship Series, an annual lectureship where guests of honor and other noted authors give lectures, read from their works, and participate in lively panel discussions on a variety of topics. The lectureship is still celebrated at ENMU each year. The Jack Williamson Liberal Arts Building houses the languages and literature, mathematical sciences, history, religion and social sciences, and psychology and political science departments of the university, as well as the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences Dean's Office. Williamson completed his Ph.D. in English Literature at the University of Colorado in Boulder, focused on H.G. Wells' earlier works, demonstrating that Wells was not the naive optimist that many believed him to be. In the field of science, Jack Williamson coined the word terraforming in a science fiction story published in 1942 in Astounding Science Fiction. Topic. Later years The science fiction writers of America named Williamson its second grand master of science fiction after Robert Heinlein, presented 1976, after having been let go from ENMU during the university's financial crisis in 1977, Williamson spent some time concentrating on his writing, but after being named Professor Emeritus by ENMU, he was coaxed back to co-teach two evening classes, creative writing, and fantasy and science fiction. He pioneered the latter at ENMU during his full-time professorship days. Williamson continued to co-teach these two classes into the 21st century. After he made a large donation of original manuscripts and rare books from his personal collection to the ENMU library, a special collections area was created to house these and it was named the Jack Williamson Special Collection. In 1994 Williamson received a World Fantasy Award for Lifetime Achievement. The Science Fiction and Fantasy Hall of Fame inducted Williamson in 1996, its inaugural class of two deceased and two living persons. The Horror Writers Association conferred its Bram Stoker Award for Lifetime Achievement in 1998 and the World Horror Convention elected him Grand Master in 2004. In November 2006, Williamson died at his home in Portales. New Mexico at age 98. 
Despite his age, he had made an appearance at the Spring 2006 Jack Williamson Lectureship and published a 320-page novel, The Stonehenge Gate, in 2005. Topic. Legion of Space series While attending a great books course, Williamson learned that Henrik Sienkiewicz had created one of his works by taking the Three Musketeers of Alexander Dumas and pairing them with John Falstaff of William Shakespeare. Williamson took this idea into science fiction with the Legion of Space. Desperate for money, he searched for a quick source of income. While most pulps of the time were slow to pay, the recently restarted Astounding was an exception. However, they did not accept novels, so Williamson submitted three short stories and a novelette. Learning that they were also accepting novels for serialization, he sent in The Legion of Space, which was published in six parts. It quickly became a genre favorite, and was quickly collected into a hardcover. The story takes place in an era when humans have colonized the solar system but dare not go farther, as the first extra-solar expedition to Barnard's star failed and the survivors came back as babbling, grotesque, diseased madmen. They spoke of a gigantic planet, populated by ferocious animals and the single city left of the evil, Medusa. The Medusae bear a vague resemblance to jellyfish, but are actually elephant-sized, four-eyed, flying beings with hundreds of tentacles. The Medusae cannot speak and communicate with one another via a microwave code. The Falstaff character is named Giles Habibula. He was once a criminal, and can open any lock ever made. In his youth he was called Giles the Ghost. J. Kalam commander of the Legion, and Hal Samdu are the names of the other two warriors. In this story, these warriors of the 30th century battle the Medusae, the alien race from the lone planet of Barnard's star. The Legion itself is the military and police force of the solar system after the overthrow of an empire called the Purple Hall that once ruled all humans. In this novel, renegade purple pretenders ally themselves with the Medusae as a means to regain their empire. But the Medusae, who are totally unlike humans in all ways, turn on the purples, seeking to destroy all humans and move to the solar system, as their own world, far older than Earth, is finally spiraling back into Barnard's star. One of the purples, John Ulner, supports the Legion from the start, and he is the fourth great warrior. His enemy is the purple pretender Eric Ulner, who sought the Medusae out in the first place, seeking to become the next emperor of the sun. The Medusae conquered the moon, set up their bases there, and went on to attempt conquest of the solar system. The Medusae had for eons used a reddish, artificial greenhouse gas to keep their dying world from freezing. The Medusae learned from the first human expedition to their world that the gas rots human flesh, and the Medusae use it as a potent chemical weapon, attempting ecological destruction by means of projectiles fired from the moon. Their vast spaceships also have very effective plasma weapons, very similar to those the Romulans had in a Star Trek episode called Balance of Terror. The Legion works also featured a force field called Akka which can erase from the universe any matter, of any size, anywhere, even a star or a planet. Akka was a weapon of mass destruction and the secret of it was entrusted to a series of women. Akka was used in the past to overthrow the Purple Tyranny. It was also used to wipe out most of the Medusae, though they had tried to steal the secret. When they were wiped out, the moon where they had established their base was erased out of existence. At the end of the story, John Ulner falls in love with the keeper of Akka, Alidori Anther, and marries her. Alidori Anther is described as a young woman with lustrous brown hair and grey eyes, beautiful as a goddess. Williamson next wrote The Cometeers which takes place 20 years after the Legion of Space in which the same characters battle another alien race, this one of different origin. In this second tale, they fight the Cometeers who are an alien race of energy beings controlling a comet, which is really a giant force field containing a swarm of planets populated by their slaves. The slave races are of flesh and blood, but none are remotely similar to humans. 
The cometeers cannot be destroyed by Akka, as they are incorporeal from the universe's point of view and exist for the most part in an alternate reality. The ruling cometeers feed on their slaves and literally absorb their souls, leaving disgusting, dying hulks in their wake. It is said that they do so, as they were once fleshly entities themselves of various species. Hence, the ruling cometeers keep other intelligent beings as slaves and cattle. They fear Akka, though, as it can erase all their possessions. They are defeated by the skills of Giles Habibula. Giles broke into a secret chamber guarded by complex locks and force fields that the incorporeal cometeers could not penetrate. In it the ruler of the cometeers had kept its own weapon of mass destruction, one that would cause the cometeers to disintegrate. The ruling cometer kept this weapon to enforce its rule over the others of its kind. Once the cometeers were destroyed, their slaves were ordered by the legion to take the comet and leave the solar system, and never return. Another novel, One Against the Legion, tells of a purple pretender who sets up a robotic base on a world over 70 light years from Earth, and tries to conquer the solar system via matter transporter technology he has stolen. In this story robots are outlawed, as they are in Dune. The story also features Jay Kalam, lobbying to allow the new cometeers to leave the solar system in peace, as many people were demanding that Akka be used to obliterate the departing swarm of planets once and for all. In 1983, Williamson published a final Legion novel, The Queen of the Legion. Giles Habibula reappears in this final novel, which is set after the disbanding of the Legion. Topic Works Topic Series Legion of Space Series The Legion of Space, nineteen forty seven, six part serial in Astounding, nineteen thirty four. The Cometeers, nineteen fifty, four part serial in Astounding, nineteen thirty six, plus one against the Legion, three part serial in Astounding, nineteen thirty nine. One against the Legion, nineteen sixty seven, three part serial in Astounding, nineteen thirty nine, plus Nowhere Near. Three from the Legion, nineteen eighty, omnibus of three novels, plus Nowhere Near. The Queen of the Legion, 1983, Humanoids series, with folded hands, 1947, in Astounding. The Humanoids, 1949, three-part serial as, and Searching Mind, in Astounding, 1949. The Humanoid Touch, 1980. The Humanoids, with Folded Hands 1996, Omnibus CT series and editor suggested that Williamson combine the ideas of contraterrene matter, antimatter, and asteroid mining, which inspired the CT, CT series of short stories written as Will Stewart. Collision Orbit. Short story, as by Will Stewart, from Astounding, 1942. CT Shock 1949 as by Will Stewart from Astounding 1949 CT Ship 1951 as by Will Stewart from previously published stories 1942 to 3 CT Ship CT Shock 1971 omnibus volume of both Undersea Trilogy with Frederick Pohl Undersea Quest 1954 Undersea Fleet 1956 Undersea City, 1958. The Undersea Trilogy, 1992. Omnibus Saga of Cuckoo with Frederick Pohl, Farthest Star, 1975. Wall Around a Star, 1983. Starchild Trilogy with Frederick Pohl, The Reefs of Space, 1964. Starchild, 1965. Rogue Star, 1969. The Starchild Trilogy, 1977, Omnibus. Topic: Novels. The Girl from Mars, 1930, with Miles J. Brewer. The Green Girl, 1930. Golden Blood, 1933. Zandulu, 1934. 
The Blue Spot 1935 Islands of the Sunday 1935 Reign of Wizardry 1940, loosely based on the story of Theseus from Greek mythology. Darker Than You Think 1948. Dragon's Island 1951, also known as the Not Men. Star Bridge 1955 with James E. Gunn. The Dome Around America 1955, also known as Gateway to Paradise. The Trial of Terra 1962, from four previously published stories, 1951–1962 Bright New Universe 1967. Trapped in Space 1968. The Moon Children 1972. The Power of Blackness 1975. Brother to Demons, Brother to Gods 1979, from five previously published stories, 1977-78 Manst 1982. Lifeburst 1984. Firechild 1986. Land's End 1988, with Frederick Pohl Mazeway 1990. The Singers of Time 1991, with Frederick Pohl Beachhead 1992 Demon Moon 1994 The Black Sunday 1997 The Fortress of Utopia 1998 originally in Startling Stories 1939 The Silicon Dagger 1999 The Stone from a Green Star 1999 originally in Amazing Stories 1931 Terraforming Earth 2001, co-winner of 2002 John W. Campbell Memorial Award. The Stonehenge Gate 2005. Topic Collections The Legion of Time, and After World's End 1952, The Pandora Effect 1969, People Machines 1971, The Early Williamson 1975, The Best of Jack Williamson 1978, The Alien Intelligence 1980, Millions de Soleils 1988, Into the Eighth Decade 1990. The Prince of Space, The Girl from Mars, 1998, TGFM written with Miles J. Brewer The Collected Stories of Jack Williamson, Volume 1, The Metal Man and Others, 1999, The Collected Stories of Jack Williamson, Volume 2, Wolves of Darkness, 1999. The Blue Spot, and Entropy Reversed released Entropy 2000, both from Astounding, 1937 The Collected Stories of Jack Williamson, Volume 3, Wizard's Isle 2000, Dragon's Island and Other Stories 2002, Novel and Two Shorts The Collected Stories of Jack Williamson, Volume 4, Spider Island 2002, 75, The Diamond Anniversary of a Science Fiction Pioneer, Stephen Hafner and Richard A. Hauptmann, eds. 2004, The Collected Stories of Jack Williamson, Volume 5, The Crucible of Power, 2006. In Memory of Wonder's Child Stephen Hafner, ed. 2007, The Worlds of Jack Williamson, A Centennial Tribute, 1908-2008, Stephen Hafner, ed. 2008. The Collected Stories of Jack Williamson, Volume 6, Gateway to Paradise, 2008 with folded hands. And Searching Mind, The Collected Stories of Jack Williamson, Volume 7, 2010 At the Human Limit, The Collected Stories of Jack Williamson, Volume 8, 2011 Topic. Short Stories The Metal Man, 1928 The Cosmic Express, 1930 the Meteor Girl 1931 The Lake of Light 1931 The Doom from Planet 4 1931 The Moon Era 1931 1932 also published as separate novelette The Pygmy Planet 1932 cover feature in Astounding Stories February 1932 Salvage in Space 1933 cover story Born of the Sunday 1934 Star Bright 1939 The Angel from Hell 1939 in Marvel Tales writing as Nils O 
Sonderland Hindsight 1940 Collision Orbit 1942 Writing as Will Stewart into CT ship Minus Sign 1942 Writing as Will Stewart into CT ship Opposites React 1943 Writing as Will Stewart into CT ship With folded hands 1947 Awarded Prometheus Hall of Fame in 2018 the Man from Outside 1951 Beans 1958 A Planet for Plundering 1962 The Masked World 1963 Jamboree 1969 The Highest Dive 1976 The Humanoid Universe 1980 The Firefly Tree 1997 the Pet Rocks Mystery 1998 Eden Star 2000 The Ultimate Earth 2000 awarded the Hugo for best novella in 2001 Topic other will Aceme kill science fiction Asimov's choice comets and computers Dale Books 1978 ISBN 0-89559-022-0 Topic Autobiography Wonder's Child, My Life in Science Fiction. Blue Jay Books, New York, 1984. Hardcover Wonder's Child, My Life in Science Fiction. Ben Bella Books, Dallas, 2005. Paperback, updated with new photographs and epilogue. Topic. Bibliography. The Works of Jack Williamson, An Annotated Bibliography and Guide, Richard A. Hauptmann, NESFA Press, 1997. Topic. See also Android Anti-matter Genetic engineering Williamson invented this term in Dragon's Island and it has since passed into common use. Psionics Space Opera Terraforming <laughs>